Hi, I'm Miguel Garcia, and I have a video by Miguel Garcia for 161 people. I never planned to get into the world of RuPaul's Drag Race. I never planned to get into that deep hole of the internet. I think I might have to, because you know what? Season 13 was an experience. Season 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race recently just came to an end after like four and a half months. For comparison, like season 12 ended in like three months. Season 13 was... It was messy. Um, it was rough. I don't mean to send hate to any of the queens. It's definitely none of the queens' faults. The season 13 cast is incredibly talented, and they're all wonderful performers, and I'm sure wonderful people. I'm mostly talking to the producers of RuPaul's Drag Race. After coming off of season 12, season 12 was one of the best seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race. I stand by this statement. It was brilliant. Every single queen got at least one storyline, and every single queen is memorable because they got a certain storyline. Whether good or bad is up for debate, but I enjoyed every single queen on that season, and I enjoyed every single role every single queen played on that season. Season 13 was a little more unpredictable, and you know what, that's not a bad thing, but it was messy. It would give you queens that you wanted to do well, and then they would just go home immediately. Or they would just constantly land in the bottom, and then you'd be like, why are they gone now? Sometimes girls didn't deserve to be in the bottom. They just put them in the bottom because producers didn't see them as an obvious contender for the crown. And then there were other queens who were definitely pushed to the finale. I'm just gonna get right into it. Season 13 would have been much better if had it been better produced. And here is what I would have done. I ended up judging the season my own and ended up producing it while it was airing because I think I did a better job than the producers, okay? I think what I came up with for this season is a lot better and is a lot more satisfactory. So here we go. What if Miguel Garcia had produced season 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race? I'm saying produced and not judged because every single season of RuPaul's Drag Race is rigged in some way just to push a certain storyline. And I don't mind if the competition is rigged as long as it gives a good story. This wonderful YouTuber, like, I'll put her a link to her channel down below. She said, A criticism that you often hear from Drag Race fans nowadays is that the show has become overproduced. That's not true. Every reality show is written the same way, with story arcs and cast members that are positioned to make it to the end. The problem with the recent seasons of Drag Race is that they are sloppily produced. And she makes a valid point. So that's why I'm saying produced. So here we go. Episode one. Episode one stays the same. I liked um, the way the queens were paired off and I liked the separation of that. It was a good nail biter because you didn't know what was gonna happen. Very spontaneous and very unpredictable and it left on a great cliffhanger. I enjoyed episode one, despite people saying it wasn't good. Episode two, there are seven queens. Five of them will be safe and two of them will be in the top because no one goes home. The safe queens are Gottmik, Candy, Lala, Tina, and Simone. Simone originally won this challenge, but I'm gonna count her as safe because I didn't really enjoy her runway looks. I really liked her first look. I didn't really enjoy her second look. And also she did fine in the performance. She did fine. You definitely wouldn't be in the bottom for this episode. There wasn't a bottom. The top two, and you guys aren't ready. Olivia Lux and Elliot with two Ts. I know y'all hate Elliot with two Ts, but credit where credit is due. She did really well this episode, the best. And also, at this point in the competition, um, the other queens are kind of like picking at her because she's like the underdog. So having her get this win is a good redemption for Elliot. And I would have liked to enjoy seeing that instead of seeing her be safe the whole competition and then just sent home. Moving on to episode three. Episode three stays the same. I agree with the judges. Kamora, Tamisha, Joey, and Utica are safe. Rosé and Denali are the top two and Denali wins the challenge. Episode four. This was the season's very first acting challenge. The safe queens are Elliot, Gottmik, Joey, Candy, Olivia, Tamisha, and Utica. The top queens are Rosé, Tina, and Simone. I'm putting Tina in the top this episode. One, I think she did well. And two, it's already hinted that like Tina and Rosé have like this feud and I think it would make a great story having them try to like get to that top spot. They're both desperately trying to win the challenge but then both of them ultimately lose it to Simone. The bottoms for this week, Lala, Denali, and Kamora. The bottom two is Denali and Kamora. Denali gives an incredible performance and Kamora goes home 13th. Episode 5, The Bag Ball. The safe queens for this episode are Elliot, Candy, Olivia, Simone, Tina, and Gottmik. I'll explain why later. Utica, Rosé, and Denali are the tops of the week, and the winner of this challenge is Rosé. Now you're probably wondering why I kept Gottmik as safe. Well, I liked her first look, I didn't really care for her second look, and then I didn't like her third look. Gottmik won this challenge because she's supposed to be like the fashion queen of the season, and though I think she served good looks, the bag ball didn't highlight her best looks. And I personally think Rosé served three 
really clean looks and they were all nicely executed. The reason Yurika doesn't win this challenge is because though she served the best look of the night, her first two looks were weak and she always does this thing where she like camps up her face like Hello, I'm Yurika, I'm like Kuki. And for that reason, I keep her as safe. Denali's in the top because she served three clean looks. And also, Denali just came off of lip syncing. This would be her moment of redemption. She finally gets a chance to redeem herself to the judges. She was just in the bottom and now she's in the top. The bottom three are Joey, Lala, and Tamisha. The bottom two is Joey and Lala. Joey J gets eliminated 12 here. Episode 6, The Disco Challenge. The save queens for this episode are Lala, Olivia, Simone, Tamisha, and Tina. Tina Burner's not in the top for this episode. She wasn't. Rosé, Elliot, and Denali are in the top because, yes, they were. The winner of this challenge is... <laughs> Elliot with two Ts. Guys, okay, stop it. Stop. Before you click off, just stand, sit, sit the fuck right back down. Elliot did good in this challenge. She did well. Just... Trust me, please, trust. It's a process. The season is going on. The bottom three for this episode are Utica, Candy, and Gottmik. The bottom two are Candy and Gottmik. Utica's not in the bottom because she needs to hear the critique of like, you don't have to be campy all the time. You don't have to be like, ooh, kooky, wah, silly face. And this is an interesting elimination because Candy and Gottmik have to lip sync against each other and Gottmik's not a good lip syncer, so... Gottmik gets eliminated 11. Originally, Gottmik made it to the top four. She's not even making the top 10 in this scenario. Y'all can hate me all you want, but she did bad in the challenge and she would have been sent home in the lip sync. She wasn't put in the bottom because she would have gone home had she been put in the bottom. Moving on. Episode seven is the improv challenge. They were put into teams and I'm gonna judge them in teams because it's a team challenge. Elliot and Tina are paired as a team and they're safe. Candy and Simone are also in a team, and they're safe. Originally, Gomic was with Utica and Olivia, but now Tamisha's still here, so Tamisha would probably go with them. I think that would make sense. And they're the winning team. I think they would be even funnier with Tamisha on there. And the winner of this challenge is Olivia Luck. She scores her very first win. The bottoms for this episode are Rosé, Denali, and Lala. I personally didn't think Rosé, Denali, and Lala were that funny, and I think it would make sense to have Rosé be in the bottom-ish, because she had been doing so well front runner up to this point we wanted to like kind of slither her wiggle to the top with wiggle to the top denali and lala are the bottom two and could you imagine how amazing this lip sync would have been how oh my gosh i mean denali is like in a gown but i think she would have done pretty well lala re gets eliminated in this episode episode eight the very first rusical the safe queens for this episode are tina olivia and denali the tops of this week are utica rose and elliot i think elliot did pretty well I think Denali was put in the top for like story. The winner of this week's challenge is Rosé. But if we're being honest, I think Utica did the best this challenge. And I think Rosé mostly won because, you know, Jan didn't win the Rosical originally. I like, I don't understand what character Rosé was playing. Like, was she, she was slutty, but she like sounded Broadway. It didn't make sense to me. But like, she wins because her runway's better than Utica. Runways matter, people. The bottoms of this week are Tamisha, Candy, and Simone. Because yes, they were. I personally didn't think Candy did that bad in this challenge. I actually kind of enjoyed it. And I think Tamisha and Simone would have been the bottom too. And it would have been great because it would have been another rematch. In episode one, Tamisha and Simone lip sync against each other, and in this episode, they will lip sync against each other again. And in this scenario, I think Simone would still beat Tamisha. Tamisha goes home ninth in this scenario. It's sad to see the queen go home, but at least we got to see her for like two more episodes. Episode nine, Snatch Game. Snatch Game was a very hit or miss. You were either great or you were bad, and there are eight queens left, so in my opinion, Half of you are in the top and half of you are in the bottom. Also, this is like one of the few times I'm going to do this, but I'm going to give Utica the mini challenge win because it really doesn't make sense to give Tina Burner a mini challenge win when she's like been doing really mediocre. Like, why are we trying to give her a better score? And also, I'm aware that Utica's going to be in the bottom no matter what happens. So giving her this mini challenge will like bump her score up by like one point. There's a top four and a bottom four this week. Denali, Rosé, Candy and Simone are the tops of the week. The winner of this challenge was originally Gottmik, but she's not here anymore. So who am I giving the win to? I'm gonna give it to Simone. I think Simone was pretty funny and I think her runway was very important. The bottom four of this week are Tina, Olivia, Utica, and Elliot with UTs. The bottom two are definitely Utica and Elliot. And every season needs to have one of these. So this is the time I'm gonna use the double Shantae. I don't think it'd be like a well-deserved double Shantae. I think Utica beat Elliot. But up to this point, Elliot had won two challenges and Utica 
just like beat her in the lip sync. So we're keeping them both. Episode 10, the makeover challenge. Originally, Got Mick was paired with Candy, but I think in this scenario, Elliot with two T's would be paired with Candy. They kind of have like a slight feud going on. And as a producer, I would put them together just to see if they would like get their shit together. There's again a top four and a bottom four this week. The top four is Utica, Simone, Elliot, and Candy. I think Elliot and Candy would do like fine. I think they would do okay and we're pushing them. They're, they're being pushed. Utica and Simone obviously win this challenge. The bottom four is Denali, Olivia, and Tina and Rosé. The bottom two is Tina and Rosé. I have no idea why they weren't in the bottom originally. This face. Also, Rosé didn't do a good job on Tina either. And I also think this would conclude their story because they're having like a little bit of a feud and now they have to lip sync against each other. It would create drama. Tina Burner would be eliminated in this episode. Episode 11, the commercial challenge. I'm gonna go ahead and do a top four and a bottom three. I don't want anyone to be safe. I don't think anyone should have been safe this episode. The top four of this week are Candy, Olivia, Rosé, and Simone. The winner of this challenge is Rosé. Utica, Elliot, and Denali are the bottom three. This would be the episode where Denali gets robbed. Denali and Elliot with two T's would be in the bottom. This would be an incredible lip sync. I would, oh my gosh, can you imagine? This lip sync would be, huh! And the writing on the wall is pretty obvious. Denali would get sent home by Elliot because this was Denali's third time being in the bottom. Episode 12. The Roast. I'm changing the mini challenge win again because it, it makes sense to give the extra point to like these two queens. Utica and Olivia would win the mini challenge. I don't know why Utica and Gottmik didn't win the mini challenge originally. <sighs> mm. Rosé and Candy are the top two and Candy wins the challenge. Olivia is safe. I don't think she did horrendous, but it wasn't great. She's just safe. The bottom three is Simone, Elliot, and Utica. I'm gonna go ahead and give Simone a life jacket here. She just moves on. The bottom two would be Utica and Elliot. And this would be the episode where Utica gets sent home. Episode 13, the acting challenge. Rosé and Simone would be in the top this week and Simone would win this challenge. I think she should have. Candy is just safe. No bottom, no top, just safe. Elliot and Olivia are the bottom two this week and Elliot with two T's finally goes home. After four lip syncs, she would be considered the lip sync assassin though. I think Denali would have been the lip sync assassin. And that brings us to our top four. The top four is Rosé, Simone, Candy, and Olivia Lux. Episode 14, nothing happened. Episode 15, nothing happened. Episode 16, it's the finale. The wheel is rigged. It's always rigged. Guys, it's always rigged. So I'm going to rig it the way I would like it to be rigged. The wheel lands on Rosé, and Rosé decides to pick Olivia. This would be the rematch that we weren't expecting. They lip sync against each other in the first episode, and now they'll have to lip sync for the crown. Who do I think would win? Olivia. Rosé gets eliminated, and this would be a gag, kind of like it was originally, because she had the best track record up to that point. Next up would be Simone versus Candy. Simone would be Candy. I, yeah. And the top two of season 13 would be Olivia Lux and Simone. And it all leads to Simone winning just like originally. So great, was this video pointless? I don't know. Here's the final scoreboard. Here is their points per episode score. Here is how they ranked, and here's how they ranked based on their track record. Shout out to you for um, his points per episode score. I, I think it's the most effective and the smartest way to judge them based on how they did. So that was it. That was season 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race had I judged it. And here's why it's great. Kamara is the pretty girl that gets eliminated first. Joey is the misunderstood androgynous queen that gets eliminated too early. Gomic is the transgender fashion queen that gets sent home a little too early. La La Ri is the queen that does a little too poorly and isn't fully polished to be on this competition, so she gets sent home. Tamisha is the drama starter and eventually gets sent home by the person that sent her home originally. Tina Burner is the campy queen whose feud with Rosé ends up being her demise. Denali is the lip sync assassin who was either a hit or a miss with the judges and ultimately gets sent home because she was robbed. Utica is the misunderstood fashion queen and quirky queen who gets unexpectedly sent home in the roast when we thought she would originally do well. Elliot with two T's is another lip sync assassin who started off strong in the competition but then ends up lip syncing four times. Candy is the fan favorite that makes it to the top four. Rosé is the obvious front runner that gets sent home unexpectedly in the finale. Olivia is a surprise and young queen who no one was really expecting to make to the finale, but she ends up being the runner up. And Simone is the winner. She is a very smart activist. And in this scenario, she would only lip sync once. She wasn't the obvious front runner, Rosé was. And then in the finale, Rosé gets sent home and now Simone wins. I think that just about does it for this week's video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video because I don't know why you wouldn't enjoy watching this video. 
please like, comment, share, and subscribe because I'm very, very desperate. And I'll see you all in the next one.